it's Thursday. So while I was trying to work out what we should be making this week, I realized it had been a really long time since we last made any dragons. I think the last one was actually Marigold. So that was nearly a year ago. It's definitely time to fix that. So this week we are going to be making tiny little dragons, including their very own dragon horde starter pack, consisting of a single gold coin. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in a couple of different colors. So you're going to need a main dragon color, a color for his finger and toenails, a color for his wings, and a color for the optional coin we're going to give him to hold on to. You're also going to need a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, pins and needles, scissors, and some stuffing. I also recommend that you have a pair of stitch markers or bobby pins handy just to help you form his head. A written version of today's pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be listed on my Etsy. I will leave links to both in the description down below for anyone who is interested. So to start with today, we are going to make his head. Now the head all the way through to the tip of the tail is all one piece, but we are going to carve it up into a couple of different sections just to help us really focus on each piece. So for the head, we're going to start at the tip of the nose in your main dragon color, which for me is going to be this pale yellow. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. So just like so. In row two, we're going to be forming his lip. And to do that, we're going to be working in the back loops only. So if you look straight down at your stitch, you should see that you've got two loops. You have a loop on the front of the piece and a loop on the back of the piece. So we're going to be working just into those back loops and you're going to work six single crochet in the back loops only around the whole round. So you'll see there what that's done. It's given us these front loops as an edge around the tip of his nose, which is kind of forming his beak. So now what we're going to do is grab our stitch markers or bobby pins, and I want you to mark the first and the sixth front loop. We'll be using those to help form his eyebrow ridges later. So now in row three, we're going to go back to working through both loops and we're going to work two repeats of a single crochet, an increase, and then a single crochet. So there's our first repeat, and we'll do it again. Then for round four, we're going to start by putting three single crochet into the same stitch, then a single crochet, then an increase, three single crochet, an increase, and a single crochet to finish the round. And at this point, you should have 12 stitches in your round. This is one of those patterns where I do strongly encourage you to stop at the end of every single row and count and make sure that your stitch count is correct. So you can go ahead now and work up the next three rows of his head, which will get us to the point where we're forming his eyebrows. Like so, so that's what he looks like with his little nose piercings at the moment. Little mustache. Oh, oh yeah, wait. And in the next row, we are going to form his little eyebrow ridges. So we start by working two single crochet. And then instead of working into the next stitch in our round, we're going to work into the closest marked front loop. So this one down here. So in order to do that, we're going to do use a quintuple treble crochet, which means that we're going to yarn over our hook four times. Okay, four, four times over the hook. Then notice that I'm using my finger to hold those loops steady on the hook while I maneuver things around. That, that's, that might be helpful. I'm going to insert my hook through that closest front loop that we marked, yarn over and pull up a loop. So at this point, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six loops on your hook. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through just the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, and just repeat that two loops at a time here we are, I'm at my final set of loops. Then just yarn over and pull through the last two remaining loops. And there is his first eyebrow ridge. So now I'm going to skip the stitch in the round that falls behind that stitch, because instead of working into that one, we've worked this front loop on instead, and work two single crochet across. Like 
like so. And then I'm going to do the exact same stitch in our second front loop. So yarning over four times. Then I actually use the stitch marker to help pull this front loop up and over because the first one tends to be really small. Yarn over and pull up a loop until you've got six loops on your hook. Then yarn over and pull through two at a time until the stitch is done. Like so. So we are once again going to skip the stitch in our main row that falls behind our long treble stitch and work two single crochet down the side of his face. So we're not quite done with the fanciness in this particular row because the next stitch is a single crochet three together. Now there are two variations of this stitch. I prefer the invisible one, which is the one I'm going to show today. I did recently go through both versions in the bearded dragon video. So you can check that out if you need the alternate version. Basically I insert my hook through the front loops of the next three stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and finish off my decrease. So there's one, then I'm going to work two single crochet, and then another single crochet three together. So there we are at the end of the round. I am going to remove my stitch markers at this point so we can admire our handiwork. So you'll see we've got a couple of little eyebrows. They're not secured down to the head or anything, but they are lining up across the top of his head. And he should have some nice puffy cheeks from where we did those single crochet threes together. And from our remaining front loop stitching, he should have this little lip at the end of his nose. So from here, we're going to be narrowing off the neck quite significantly. So now is the time to attach our safety eyes. So these eyebrow ridges make it really easy to tell where these eyes should go. All you do is count backwards from your magic ring until you hit row five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And pop the safety eye in so that the top edge of it just touches your eyebrow. Do the same thing on the other side. Now from the top, I can see that those aren't quite lining up. So I'm just gonna move this one here forward one stitch. That's better. So that's where my eyes are going to go. And I'm gonna snap the backs on now. And we're also just going to stuff the head at this point as well. So tear your stuffing into tiny little puffs and poke them in one little puff at a time until your head is fully stopped. That's right, so there we are. So now going back to our hook, we're going to do one final row to lock in this detail at the top of the head. So we start with two single crochet. Then we're once again not going to work into the next stitch in our round and instead this time we're going to work around the post of our eyebrow and we're going to work a treble crochet. So that means we are yarning over just twice. Insert your hook under that post, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you'd have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two at a time until the stitch is done. So that is what our treble crochet currently looks like. We're going to skip that stitch, as I said, because we worked around the post instead. Then work two single crochet across the top of the head. Then we're going to treble crochet around the other post as well. skipping the stitch behind it, and then working two single crochet and then two decreases to finish off the row. Now at this point your opening should be down to just 10 stitches. So what that's done, it's given a little bit of a small spike at the back of the head just to finish off that line of the eyebrow. And that is the end of the really tricky stuff for this particular piece. <laughs> And from here you can work up the next 14 rows, which will bring us to the base of the tail. And what you should notice as you work up those rows is that we're using a combination of increases and decreases and what that's doing, it's curving the neck downwards and then swelling out into a belly shape. So your dragon should be forming this gentle S type bend. So we're going to stop and we're going to stuff the neck and the body. So now we're just gonna continue on and build up the rest of the tail. And you should pause every two to three rows to stuff as you go. And finish off.
So we're going to take our remaining tail and weave it through the front loops only of the six remaining stitches. And pull it tight to close. Then just tuck that end away inside your dragon. Nobody has to know. So there is your finished head, body and tail piece. Your head might lilt off to one side if you work in the spiral like I do. That is just something that is going to happen. It should be relatively straight down the line though. From the top, it's just your head might tilt slightly one way or the other. So pop that to one side for now. So next up, we are going to be making his arms. Now we make his arms starting in our base color, but we also need to have his fingernail claw color ready to go. So have that nearby. So you start with a magic ring of six. Like so. Then in row two, we're going to be building his claws. So we're going to start by working a single crochet in our current color. And then in the next single crochet, we're going to change to our claw color, which I have yeah. So how I work color changes in this pattern is I insert my hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops of my old color on the hook, hold that out of the way, wait for the plane to fly over, Grab a strand of your new colour, pinch it at the base of the stitch, yarn over and pull through both of your loops with it, and then tug on the tails to tighten it down. So what that should leave you with is a finished stitch in your old colour, but your new colour is on your hook, ready to go. So now we are going to form his claws, and we're going to do that by working a triple crochet or a treble crochet into each of the next three stitches. Now we have already done trebles this project, but I'll still show you again here. So start by yarning over your hook twice. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, leaving you with four loops on your hook. You're then going to yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two. So there is your treble crochet. And I'm going to work one of those into each of the next two stitches. So there's my second one, but in my third one, I actually want to change back to my yellow. So I started off the same way as the others, insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, got the four loops there, yarn over in our orange through the first two, yarn over through the next two, but when I'm down to my final two loops, I'm once again going to hold my old colour out of the way, and make that final yarn over with my colour that I'm changing to. Once again, tugging on the tails to tighten it down. So you'll see colour changes can be done with any sized stitch, it's just a matter of that final yarn over and pull through happening in your new colour. So there are his little claws. To finish off that round now, I just work one single crochet in my main dragon colour. So that's the end of row two. So that magic ring is actually the outer side of his hand rather than the palm the way I would normally do it. So all of this can be hidden on the inside of your arm away so that no one can see it and all you'll be able to see is his little manicure. So we are now just going to carry on and work up the rest of the arm. So row three is two increases. And then two decreases. And then we're going to work three rows of six single crochet around for a combined total of 18 stitches. Like so, and finish off. And you can trim off your orange as well if you haven't already. So we're not stuffing this piece, but we can tuck all of our yarn tails down inside, like so. And then just like with the body, we're going to use our remaining piece of yarn and pull it through the front loops only to close off that little gap. Tuck that down inside the arm as well. 
So there is his finished arm and it has a right side which has the magic ring showing on it and a wrong side which has a little bit more of the claw color showing. This side here should be against the body so all you'll see is this side here. So there's your first little arm and you are of course going to need two of those. Pop them to one side. So the legs are constructed in a very similar way. So grabbing our main dragon color again we're going to start with a magic ring of six. We are then going to work two repeats of a single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch, and then a single crochet. So there is our first one, and we're going to do it again to bring our row total up to 10 stitches around. Like so, we're then going to work three rows of 10 single crochet around for a combined total of 30 stitches. So, so that's worked up like the beefy part at the top of his leg. We're then going to start forming his foot. So we do that by working three single crochet. Then three single crochet all into the same stitch. And then six single crochet to finish the round. So there is the start of his little foot. So row seven, we are going to work a decrease, a single crochet, an increase, single crochet, increase, and single crochet. And then finish off that row with a decrease and then a single crochet three together so you may notice that we are closing off the back of the leg while still expanding the foot so in the next row we are going to form his toenails so we start with a decrease and then a single crochet where we will change to our toenail color we are then going to work a triple crochet into each of the next three stitches the same way we did on the hands one, two, and in this third one we'll be changing back to our yellow. So we almost complete the stitch. So we work the stitch until we have just two loops left on our hook. Then grab the color we're changing to and finish off the stitch with it. Which looks something like that. Then finish off the row with a single crochet and a single crochet three together. You can trim off your orange at this point. So we are also not stuffing this piece. So we have one more row to work to finish closing off the face of the foot. And that is two single crochet, single crochet three together across the base of your toenails. And two single crochet. Finish off. So like we did for the arms and the body, just close off this little gap like so. So you'll see that uh, you should end up with this little sort of foot shape, kind of a bit pointy at the back, three little points at the front, stomps around like this. So there is your first leg and once again you will need two of those and then just pop them to one side. So next up we have the wings and there is a top wing and a bottom wing. So we'll start with the bottom wing just to get you used to the technique that we're going to be using for them because these wings are not done over wire they're actually stitched over the tail of the crochet and you'll see what i mean in a minute so i'm going to use white for mine going for the very fairy dragon aesthetic so first up you want to leave a long tail on the strand you're working on so i use roughly one hook's length and then attach my yarn to my hook with a slip knot leaving that tail now, if you are working with a short hook, for whatever reason, you could also use roughly one hand length. In either case, that will be an overestimation of the 
actual amount of yarn you need. I just prefer to be safe rather than sorry and we can always trim off excess but it's hard to attach more on. Now if you've made my pig pattern from the start of the year you will already have seen me use this particular technique but basically what we're going to do is work all of our stitches over the top of this tail. So the first stitch is the hardest so I'm holding the tail in my left hand nice and tightly. I've also got tension on my active strand there. I'm going to insert my hook under the tail then yarn over with my active strand and pull up a loop Then yarn over and pull through both of the loops. So essentially working a single crochet just around the tail strand instead of into a stitch. So there is our first one and I'm going to work seven more of those. So I find this a lot easier if I hold both the stitches that I'm working on and the tail in the same kind of pinch so that I have this little loop to insert my hook into and pull up my loops through. But honestly, yeah, that first stitch is the hardest and the rest are all pretty easy. Okay, so now I have eight stitches there. I'm now going to work a picot. So what that means is we're going to chain three. So we chain one normally, then chain two really tightly, then insert our hook back through that first chain and slip stitch into it. So that's going to be the point at the tip of our wing. We're then going back to stitching over the top of our tail and we're going to put eight more single crochet over the top of it. Like so, looks like a little wishbone. So I'm now going to insert my hook through the first stitch we did over the top of that tail and slip stitch into it to close the wing and finish off. So there is our first wing, but now what we're going to do is just pull it our tail a little bit because it'll bunch the stitches closer together and make this hold its shape a little nicer. So it's not like with the pigtail where you can just pull it and it coils up in like a magic little fun trick. You actually want to be a little bit more careful this time. And I'm going to hold it. I'm going to very gently just pull a little bit and you'll feel the tension around the wing. Then you can just grab it and move those stitches around to move that tension back towards the base. Bunch them up. Looking like that. Pull a little bit more. You can skip this step if it's not working for you very well. This will just really help lock in this particular wing shape for us. There we go. But we stop before it goes super wibbly wobbly. So I'm going to leave mine at that point. You'll note that it no longer kind of warps as much as it used to and it does hold its little loop shape. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to tie my two ends together to stop it from moving. Be careful when making this knot as well that you don't add extra tension where you don't want it. So there is our first bottom wing. Now, just because I don't know how well I'm explaining that, I'm going to show you again. So you've got to leave one hook's length of a tail, roughly. See what I mean about there being extra yarn. So we work our first stitch over the tail. And seven more. Then a pico. Now you can do these wings without the pico as well. You'll just end up with a rounded wing, which could also be really pretty. Then eight more single crochet. Then slip stitching back into our first stitch, making sure that you don't twist your work. And finish off. Now in the name of good sportsmanship I am going to pull this one too tightly just to show you what happens and how you fix it even though it hurts me. So if you grab this and just yank it indiscriminately you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like that. All you need to do is slowly tug on your stitches until you tease them back out into the shape they're meant to be. And then apologize to it for being so rough. Now you do want to make sure that your two pieces end up roughly the same size. Sometimes when you're pulling you can sort of warp 
the size things end up by pulling one tighter than the other. But wings are allowed to be sisters, not twins. Kind of like eyebrows. Close enough. Close enough. And tie it off again. And I'm doing a double knot. Just to make sure nothing budges. So there are our lower wings and now we just have to do our upper wings. So upper wings are done the same way, leave the same length of tail as you were using for the lower wings. Even though the upper wings are a little bit bigger, we left enough yarn leeway that it, that it'll all be fine. So for the upper wings, the left wing and the right wing are different and that is because for these lower wings you can just rotate them because they have that rotational symmetry going on. Your upper wings have a few more spikes to them so we need to be able to flip them. Now, and like one side of your stitching will always look different to the other side of your stitching, which is why instead of flipping them, I've just made two versions of the pattern, which is reversed. If that doesn't make any sense, just trust me when I say I did this so it looks good and, and let's move on and make our first wing. So our first wing starts with 10 single crochet over the tail. My tension got a little away from me there, but it'll still work. We are then going to pico. Then two single crochet over the tail. Pico. Two single crochet over the tail. A final picot. And then six single crochet. Then slip stitch through the first stitch, just like we did on the lower wings. And finish off. So for our upper wing, the picot closest to the longest side is kind of the middle point. So we are just going to once again gently pull, it's going to crumple up a little bit. And we're going to just squeeze our stitches into a nice position and then tie it off when we're happy. There is our first top wing. And it doesn't matter which side of the wing you like better. I think I like this side better. So that'll be the side I have facing outwards. But as long as you make one from each pattern, you can decide which one is your left wing and which one's your right wing. So now we're going to make our second wing. And those of you that are paying attention will notice that our second wing is actually the same as the first wing. It's just instead of working our row of instructions from left to right, we're working it from right to left. Now I've obviously typed it out for you in the order you need to do it. It's just a, uh, that's actually how you flip something in case you were ever wondering. Like so. So there is our second wing. I think I've pulled one of those a lot tighter than the other, but you won't even notice once they're attached. So no need to be a perfectionist for this particular pattern. There are our wings. Pop them to one side. Okay, so to make our little coin, I have just a brighter yellow here. We all know dragons love their treasure. Going to start with a magic ring of six. We are then going to work six increases to get our round up to 12 stitches around. And 
and then six repeats of a single crochet and an increase to get our round up to 18. Like so. We are then going to work 18 back post single crochet around. So, so yours should also be like bowing in at the moment, that's fine. Then we're going to do a round of 18 single crochet. Which just gives us that little bit of a lip. And we're now going to work 18 back post single crochet around again. So we're now just going to close off the other side of our coin. So we'll do six repeats of a single crochet and a decrease. And then six decreases around. And finish off. Close off our little gap. So and flatten it back out into a queen like shape. Now where you finished off you might end up with a little bit of like a pointy pokey bit. Try and tuck that down inside but if it doesn't work make sure that that's the side you put against the body and no one will have to know. No one has to know. Who's going to know? So there is a little coin, or you could just pass him a gold chocolate coin, I suppose. Or just as another cute little option for you, back in the wrap pattern, I showed you how to make a cute little strawberry that is also size appropriate for this dragon. So options. So now we have all of our pieces. The time has come to assemble. So basically what we'll do is we'll pin and sew the legs on, and then we will pin and sew the wings on. I just recommend doing your most fragile pieces last. Where is my turtle? Hello, turt. How are you doing, bud? So for my existing one, I have put him in a little seated position. But, so this particular dragon, because of the way we've constructed the legs, you can give him pivoting joints as well, so he can be in many different poses. You can make him standing up, or sitting down, or, you know, squatting a little bit by moving the legs up the body a bit. It's entirely up to you. So we're going to start with the back legs. Now, they get pinned to either side of the belly so that they line up with the front of the body. There's nothing super fancy about it, but what you can do is if you just pin it through the middle of the leg to the body, you can work out from there if you want a seated pose, like I've done with my little orange fellow, or if you want a standing pose, which is what I'm going to be doing with my yellow one today. So once you've decided, use a second pin to just lock in the rotation. At this point, you should make sure that your dragon is stable and not tilting forwards. And we're going to take a little of our body colored yarn and stitch those legs on. Anyway, like that, and then we're going to grab our arms, and as I mentioned before, the side with more of the claw colour showing goes against the body, 
but otherwise they should just rest gently on top of your legs. And once again, you can choose to just put a pin through the shoulder and then pose the arm how you like. For my orange one, I've obviously handed him a little gold coin. So before we sew on our arms, we need to make sure that we've positioned whatever you have your dragon holding so that you know it fits as well. Right, so that's roughly where I want my arms to be. So then I've got my props and I have to decide what I want him to hold. So if I was doing the gold coin, I'd probably place it against his tummy with his claws on top of it like that. And I'd honestly probably do the same thing for the strawberry. Just a little strawberry hat on my dragon. Neat. No. Okay, we're going to stick with the gold coin theme because dragons love money. So that is where I would put that coin. So my shoulder positioning is good. I'm just going to pin that coin in place now. So note that I've got the nicer side of the coin showing and the rougher side against his stomach so that nobody has to know. I do encourage you if you have a sitting dragon to put it off under just one arm because the asymmetry I think adds a certain something to his cuteness. Golly they are a cute pair though. So with that done now we can sew his arms on. And finally, with your little dinosaur all sorted, we are going to turn him into a dragon by attaching the wings. So I like to pin my lower wings on first. And I'm pinning them basically behind where the shoulders are sitting on the arms there. Make sure you, that you're pinning them so that the side you like best is facing outwards. So that's roughly where I've positioned those. And then your upper wings, once again with the side you like best facing outwards. And I pin those on the outside of the lower wings so that there's a little bit of crossover. Like so. And I'm just going to sew those on. And there is your finished little fairy dragon. So there is our finished dragon. I hope you had fun making them with me today. So like I said, it had just been a really long time since we made any dragons together. I just thought it was time we fixed that. Uh, I particularly like the fact that you don't need any wire for the wings in these ones here. I think that makes it a lot more accessible for more people because you don't have to like worry about pliers and wire and cutting and all that other kind of stuff, you know? But yeah, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye!